I feel like a dolphin who's never tasted zombie takeout. Hello and welcome to Zombie Takeout, the B-Moving Cult Movie Podcast. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And yeah, we're back. It was almost another four and a half months. Wow. <laughs> it hasn't been that long, has it? It's December, January. If, we didn't, <clears throat> if we didn't do the show in December, it would be very close to four months. You're right. Like within a few days. Um, it's been an interesting time off. Good God. <laughs> It has been epic. Two funerals in two different parts of North America, Oy. evicted from my mm-hmm. home, and uh, I don't know, there was something going on in the news in the past few weeks. Uh, oh, yeah. It, uh, it escapes we'll, me. We'll get to know. that in a moment. Um, <laughs> on my end, um, broke the front wheel of my wheelchair. Damn. You haven't heard about this. You didn't see any of the post about it? I, you know it. Yeah, now it's coming back to me. Right. Broke the front. Um, I was walking up to my the CVS like a couple of blocks away, turned into the side entrance, didn't look at the curb, which was a little higher than I thought it was going to be, and hit the hit the wheel, you know, hit the curb with the wheel, and it just shattered. Combination of being 15 years old and it being around freezing at the time. This was December 20th. This was the fucking day that Rise of Skywalker came out. Oh. So I actually passed on seeing Rise of Skywalker. Quick note, um, we, this is the first year in, in a few that we won't be beginning the year talking about a Star Wars movie because you still haven't seen it and I fucking hated it. So we, yeah. we won't be talking about Rise of Skywalker this year. Um, but anyway, passed on seeing that because of the reviews. And also um, some candy that I had delivered had said may contain traces of nuts. I'm allergic. So I had to go up and get something else and broke the wheel in, in, in the process. Um, took a month to get a, a good replacement. How the hell do you get around without a good replacement? Well, though? it broke, like I said, going into the side entrance. It was just the front wheel. I, I managed to walk home with it. Walk in quotes, of course, before he makes it. This has that. Um, Got home that way after going in and buying some chocolate. <laughs> um, and then uh, for the next month, I just got around the house on three wheels. And I had a cheap temporary one, very, very cheap chair that I used to go out to therapy a couple times. Okay. Um, but um, the new chair took a month to get here or, you know, between everything and cost me three grand. Whoa. Yeah. So that was my time off in addition to a horrible Star Wars movie. A birthday. I never like my birthdays. Um, <laughs> and then, well, on to that particular thing you were alluding to. Yeah, we're all going to be spending a lot of time at home for a while. Yeah. And to that end, um, for, for a couple of years now, I've been compiling, well, maybe not a couple of years, like a year and change. I've been compiling a list of free legal streaming services to talk about on free time. The show that I do occasionally, might still do occasionally. Um, but yeah, I've put that up on on my uh, on Google Documents. I've posted it on my social media, my personal social media already. I will be posting it on all of our socials um, in case you're looking for stuff to watch. I might repost my birthday recommendation list as well. I posted that in mid February. It, it's just you know recommended media for to check out because again we all got a lot of free time. Like I said, I've seen the list, but I didn't have a chance to like look mm-hmm. over it. But I think I, I know what some of the things are on there, and probably well, you've you seen know a lot, a lot of them. Of them you, I mean, there's obvious stuff like YouTube and Twitch and you know Crackle, Tubi. Um, but there's some obscure shit on there, like popcorn flicks, and there's a couple of old movie channels. Um, there's also Nosy, which is all old American game shows and like trashy TV shows, trashy like daytime talk shows and reality shows. Not my thing, but if you're into it, there's a source. See, um, I, I think in my head I had this whole thing. You know, when you, someone says quarantine, I think of this like very quiet and boring mm-hmm. uh, kind of existence. But um, well, quarantine in the digital age when you still have to work. Oh well, I mean, I'm glad you're still working though, because a lot of people aren't. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, I'm uniquely suited to this. Um, 
I'm on disability. I live with my mom who's retired. So we were getting paid. Um, and neither of us goes out much. I could easily do a few months at home. I'm doing therapy online. Um, we're getting deliver- grocery deliveries. That's the only thing is obviously the panic buying is an issue. I cannot remember the last time I've been in the same place for 10 days. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I don't have that problem. I, I spend most of my time sitting right where I am now. So it's that part's easy for me. Like, like we had, we've had blizzards here. Um, we've had polar vortexes. I mean, my boss had to talk me out of going into work the last time we had a polar vortex. I was like, <laughs> but I mean, we're, we live in Chicago. This is just a part yeah, of life, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, but it's cold out. I'm like, it's winter in Chicago. Hmm. But oh well. It was like, like yeah, I had to put off a tattoo um, that I was planning to get a couple weeks ago. Also, the only real di- issue I've had with any of this, I mean, obviously, outside of like concern for other people in my you know family, uh, like the only thing it's it's kept me from really doing that I will say, a couple weeks ago. I was planning to go see Tokyo Godfathers in a theater. It was get- oh right. It was re-released on the 9th and the 11th in honor of the 10th anniversary of mm. Satoshi Kon's death. I had the ticket. I had the Uber scheduled. I was going on a Wednesday. That Tuesday night, the t- the 10th, I decided I'm really not comfortable sitting in the theater. Yeah. And this was before all of the the lockdowns and quarantine and all of that. Like a couple of days later, it was all you know. Don't go out. I mean, I wound up staging a revolt where I work because I think it was, it was Friday the thirteenth. We're still heading down into the office into downtown Chicago. Mm-hmm. It's becoming a ghost town. And I'm like, this is just dumb. Yeah, it was two days in. after I was going to go see the movie, so yeah, we were both a little bit ahead of the curve. I, I just told my boss, you know what? I'm not going to come in on Monday mm-hmm. and. The whole team decided, now nah, we're not going to come in either. <laughs> Screw this. And then the next day, our yeah. office closed. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, the obligatory, you know, unless you are essential personnel and need to go out to work, stay the fuck home, wash your fucking hands, don't touch your fucking face. Right. And uh, hopefully you guys have time to watch it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, without any further ado, on to this week's movie, which is from 1991, Hudson Hawk. This is our Danny Aiello tribute. We have a few better late than never tributes coming up because we've been off for four months. Yeah, we would just text each other back and forth with like, oh my God, like, can we do this for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for this person? Two tribute episodes tonight, this and on the hearing. Um, the hearing, if you listen to that, is going to run long because <laughs> one of my biggest heroes died. But on to Hudson Hawk. And of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by Leonardo da Vinci. He didn't turn lead into gold, but if anybody could, he could have. And also brought to you by Paid Vacations. Uh, sometimes, and Adam Sandler took this to heart, paid vacations can be movies. <laughs> All right, so I guess this is <laughs> we're a little rusty at this, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so we begin this movie in uh, in Renaissance Italy, where um, uh, Leonardo da Vinci has uh, constructed a ridiculous machine that causes rainbows and shit to <laughs> shoot out of it when the sun hits it in a certain way. Also, if and, anybody could have created a rainbow machine, it would have been da Vinci. Well, true. Way better than an uh, alchemy machine. I mean, only in the 1980s can rainbows and lights be considered, like, manufacturing agents. <laughs> mm. And Da Vinci is probably my biggest hero, so I have some feelings about this movie. <laughs> so he he turns, he figures out how to turn lead into gold, but for some reason never uses it, <laughs> and nobody's heard about it, and it's like this secret thing in his text that he divides up the pieces and he's got these awesome goggles that are very steampunk like way before steampunk of course this is way before steampunk isn't it well Well, da vinci himself was way before steampunk yet he had those awesome goggles that's true he's the godfather of steampunk this is true Who, who are we kidding all right so of course he created a MacGuffin, and the MacGuffin got split into three pieces <laughs> so there were three different jobs 
for our uh, for our hero or anti-hero to do. Hmm. And that brings us into the present day. Um, Bruce Willis uh, getting out of the joint. Uh, very Blues Brothers, of course, mm-hmm. you know, where he's getting out of prison saying, you know, hi to you know, hi to the guard and stuff. His parole officer is trying to get him to do a heist job. Just when he thought he was out. Exactly. Before he's even out the door of the prison, they're trying to get him to do a job. And um, we're supposed to believe that he was running with Danny Aiello, who looks like he's like what twenty years old? <laughs> I didn't check that their ages. I, I now, imagine they're probably pretty close. Bruce Willis was in his mid thirties here, so oh, okay, I mean, so maybe ten years. Right, he was in his mid twenties mm-hmm. when he got locked away. Right. And, and Aiello that, was always looked old. And Aiello was almost fifty. Okay, so yeah, about ten to twelve years. Yeah, and. Uh, Right, they were buddies together, and uh, so, and but he's own, he owns like his own bar that seems to be doing well. So why get back into the business into, into crime at all? The the joke is, of course, that their dive bar is now a yuppie bar <laughs> and it's doing well with money. I have Yet, to admit, I gotta love any shot the yuppies. But there are like these mobsters hanging out and people shooting and shit at the bar, mm-hmm. and the yuppies not seeming to notice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so of course they pull him back in because there wouldn't be a movie if he didn't get back oh, in. Um, not that there was really a plot to the movie <laughs> to keep it going, or at least there was a very rough plot to keep him going because he does the job. He should be finished, but for some reason decides to go to the auction because they claim he didn't do the job. Even though they paid him already, what does he care? <laughs> but he he goes, and uh, the, the, the auction has a really surprising ending that I don't know if we should ruin, because who would see that coming yeah. if you hadn't seen this before? Mm-hmm. Um, they uh, finally get out of New York and go to, um, or was it North Jersey they were in, now that I think about it? Now, they were probably I in I figured New York. Yeah. He's from Hoboken, I mean, but it was New York. He's from right. Hoboken. And, and honestly, who is really from Hoboken? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go to Hoboken, <laughs> crash at Hoboken, you party at Hoboken. But who's really well, from yeah, Hoboken? It's like L.A. Nobody's really from L.A. There's nobody from Chicago. <laughs> Everybody I know is from somewhere else. But anyway, mm. um, they, they finally get out of New York and go to uh, to Italy, which is where the uh, the paid vacation was to for this whole cast. Mm-hmm. And uh, how they con so many people into getting into this movie. <laughs> um, and, of course, he has several other jobs to do to bring, put the MacGuffin together to form Voltron to turn uh, lead into gold. Mm. Um, I think that's really it, honestly. With hilarity and Seuss. I think hilarity ensues. When film critic Mark Kermode, who's pretty, you know, respected, met Richard E. Grant, Kermode told Grant that he was one of the few people who liked the film. Grant <laughs> responded, it was a stinking pile of steaming hot donkey <laughs> droppings, and you are an idiot. <laughs> and you could tell Grant was really just... Chewing the scenery. Yeah, he was just as batshit crazy. Oh, yeah. Him him and Sandra Bernhardt were just I mean, did not give a fuck. That's about when it got movie. interesting for me. <laughs> but the beginning really reminded me of Princess Bride. They had this whole storybook angle. Yes. With the Da Vinci backstory. And like, even though the machine is fictional, I like the movie. Yeah. It was just fun. And ridiculous. Oh, of course. Yeah, that that is the whole point. Yeah. It's kind of like an OG Austin Powers in yeah, a way. Yeah. It and, just needs to take itself a little less seriously. Yeah, right. But. They just went completely over the top with the steampunk alchemy scene and these ridiculously modern goggles that were clearly plastic. Um, <laughs> right. 
They didn't subtitle the Italian, which surprised me. Yeah. I guess it wasn't really necessary. No. Kind of lost interest when it jumped to the present. Um, But I think the chem... Most of what this movie rides on is the chemistry between Willis and Ayala. I was going to say, for me, once Ayala comes on the screen, Mm -hmm. I, I, I... it just came to life because he was just having so much fun. Right. I mean, the other guys, you could tell they were kind of hating life and being there and angry about the whole thing. And him and Willis just had really good chemistry. They were fun to watch. They were. And Ayala was just having fun. It looked like he was just having the time of his life on this Mm -hmm. whole thing. Now I do have two nitpicks about the movie. Sure. Ironically, I'm calling this one a nitpick. Um, they're, they're pulling this little job that kind of starts the whole thing. And Willis's character, Hawk, is, is, pull, is picking an office door using two picks. <laughs> if you don't know anything about lock picking, it's not going to catch your attention. But it's a pick and a tension wrench that you use to pick a lock. I was, I was happy to see that he was putting two things into the lock, and then I realized that they were two picks. Ah. That's an interesting oversight that they would make. I, I, just, mean, I happen to know. I'm not saying I'm good at it, but I know how to pick locks. So, I, you know, I, I noticed that. Um, I have to admit, I like the singing gag. Yes, it was very clever. It's it's a clever way of in putting a musical number yeah, yeah. into, I mean, and the reason for it. And, and there's somebody on Sirius XM named Dennis Falcone who knows the time or Actually, it's not the time of every song. He knows the time length of the intro to each song because he's a DJ and he mm. can just he just rattles off times right. like that. Having done some DJing, I'm sure we both understand that. But why did Hawk know the time length of every song? Because it was his job. Oh, he, he, he did that specifically to have... I, I assume they'd, they'd had that gag going be t- to time get jobs. Hmm. I mean, it, of course, it's handy if you know the times. It's just knowing the times of songs. Or maybe they're just music geeks. I mean, I'm not quite on that level, but I'm not far. Like, I can name the personnel on several albums. I know a lot of studio music... Know of a lot of studio musicians. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of, like... Obs- you know, ridiculous details about records, uh, about music, you know, some recorded songs. So, like, knowing the running times, not that much of a stretch to me. Um, I do, I did like the transition after that job. They, they have to jump from a building onto the awning. Yeah. And they hit the awning and it Im- immediately transitions to Hawk sitting down in, in the house, the, the apartment of the guy he's delivering the statue to. Right. That. It, that, it's very cartoony directing here yeah you know yeah but i, I enjoyed it um now the cartoon style i think they were really influenced i think by the gods must be crazy yeah i can They're, see it you referenced that as one of your perspective titles yeah. and i didn't quite get it but yeah it i do know that you mentioned yeah that was very cartoonish I mean, the very, like, fast-forward Benny Hill action stuff. I mean, and, and like, just the violence in The God Must, mm-hmm. Gods Must Be Crazy yeah. did that. I, I, although it didn't go to this extreme, they, they kind of really went almost trauma mm-hmm. in some of their violence here. Just roll it back a bit. Um, in the film, uh, Da Vinci's most ambitious project is a machine that can turn lead into gold through the use of solar energy and alchemical salts and rainbows. Um <laughs> This is called the Da Vinci Gold Machine, or the Leonardo Da Vinci Gold Machine. Although there is no historical evidence that he had dabbled in alchemy, it does incorporate and adapt mechanical principles and devices that came directly from his work. So, they did their homework on him. They did not do their homework on him. Well, I mean, the, 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 <laughs> the, the glider, it's not exactly his, but it's very closely based on his. Yeah. Um, it was made by a company called uh, Aerovironment. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah. Whoever they did the props, you yeah. know, did their homework. And the but... flying machine is his design, so you know they did their homework. Um, I got to say, like I said, um, Grant and Bernhard did raise the movie. Wasn't sure if they were going to make it better at first, but they did. Just completely scene chewing over the top. And uh, what about David Caruso? <laughs> Where was Caruso? 
He was Kit Kat. Oh, I loved Kit Kat. I didn't recognize Caruso. <laughs> At first, I thought he was one of the redheaded goons. Uh-huh. And then I was like, fuck, no. It was when he was dressed as, like, the statue. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's fucking Dean Caruso. I loved Kit Kat. Kit Kat was one of the best parts of the movie. Oh, man. <laughs> I could yeah, have done James Coburn and the whole like strange yeah, yeah. candy bar gang just before their introduction, their formal introduction though. The scene that leads up to it I could have done without the ambulance chase. Oh, I you know, I always that that's like one of the few parts I've seen of this, I think. Mm. It just seemed a little it just didn't it just bored me. It was kind of unoriginal and um Yeah, it was very three stooges, I mean Again, gods must be crazy. Yeah, yeah. But the candy bars were great. <laughs> Coburn was a blast to watch. It was kind of it, it kind of crowded the field I felt a little bit when it come came to like putting this together and and mm. you know villains and stuff. <laughs> to me this movie is kind of like um a big ridiculous Sunday. You don't really need the extra, you know, some <laughs> candied walnuts just Weirdly, I picked something I can't eat, but, you know, you don't need all of those toppings. But more, the more, the better. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get sick afterward, but it's going to be a blast while you're eating it. I think if they had gotten rid of him somewhere, you know, like if he defeated him somewhere halfway, maybe after one of the jobs, it would have made more sense. But having them all running around and double-crossing each other, but still not seemingly affected by it <laughs> no one well i can't say no one because i i think a lot of people went into this movie expecting it to make sense this was they a did. cartoon to me it doesn't make sense it's just big ridiculous and fun of course but i'm thinking you gotta you, you gotta make it mono e mono you know to make to really make it work in the end hmm. and then when you have but when you have mono e mono e mono <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> it's like, uh, it was just it was kind of all over the place at the end. I think it would have been better if I mean it, it's it was re- co-written by Bruce Willis. Uh, yeah. Now, <laughs> he didn't where know the, what he was doing. Yeah. Where the p- film did nosedive a bit for me, pretty pretty big, was this romantic subplot. Big surprise, I'm criticizing a romantic subplot. Um, <laughs> although the complete lack of chemistry between Willis and Andy McDowell did remind me a lot of Kevin Smith's comments about on Bruce Willis. <laughs> I mean, that didn't bother me all that much. It's you know, it's a Hollywood film still, and you have to have yeah. some elements of that in here. Also, um, Bruce Willis when he had hair, calling someone an Eddie Munster-looking motherfucker is rich. <laughs> Um, loved him riding the, the mail train into the Vatican with a, in a package that said, just says to the Vatican. Very cartoonish. I think uh, the cross uh, intercom or the crucicom or whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it yeah. was probably the first time I laughed out loud in the movie. Though. <laughs> Another nitpick. My other nitpick, I should say. I only have two. Um, at one point, Sandra Bernhardt's character says... On the periodic chart, referring to gold and lead, uh, on the periodic chart of elements, there are only one proton apart. Um, first off, it's called the periodic table of elements. <laughs> and gold and lead are, in fact, three protons apart. I actually looked up the oh, table to check. Uh, I wasn't expecting accuracy. I don't think such bird was either. <laughs> it's science. I have to nitpick it. I don't think... I think that might have been the point, too, is they really didn't Fair point. care. Yeah, they might have been deliberately <laughs> bad. Um, I think at ILO's speech to Will, to Hawk right before their fight was probably his best performance in the movie, or the best part of it. I'm contemplating giving this the whole brain just for the um, the the dig at happy endings mm-hmm. <laughs> at the end. Yeah. I don't um, want to ruin it. It's just so good. I loved Andy McDowell's character tripping. You won't fucking believe it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's prob- probably... I have that quote in my notes. Um, <laughs> loved, yeah, that's probably what happened to, happened to the ridiculous story of how he survived. 
<laughs> yes. And and the fight between Willis and Coburn was just hilarious. Yeah. Um, the car blowing up was a little over the top. I think it actually blew up twice. Well, that that was the point. They were like, yeah. so seriously killing him. <laughs> Again, like I said, probably one of my favorite parts of the movie was Andy McDowell's character just tripping her head off. And just saying just completely ridiculous things. Doing the dolphin She stuff. probably improvised that whole thing. Um, and I just, again, and this isn't a nitpick. It just, this is me looking for some sense, I guess. How did Hawk know how to put the crystals together? <laughs> and quite easily, too. Yeah. And, and knew well, well enough to sabotage it. Right, Exactly. And and why did they even need him to put it? How would they know that he knew? Yeah. She would know. She was the expert. Exactly. That was the point of her character was and why they were keeping her alive is because she was the expert. But but Hawk Yeah. No. <laughs> and a bunch of kids end up with Da Vinci's glider. Yeah. I, I honestly have such mixed feelings about that scene. On to sequels and remakes. Sure. A video game based on the film was released in 1991 under the title Hudson Hawk for various home computer and game consoles. It's a side-scroller in which the player, as Hawk, must steal the Forza and the Kodak from the... Is it the Forza? Forza? Is that the name of the horse? I can't remember. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, S-F-O-R-Z-A is his here. I was confused. I didn't know how had an S in it. Um, the Forza, the horse statue, and the Codex, uh, Da Vinci's Notes, from the house and the Vatican, respectively. Then Castle Da Vinci has to be infiltrated in order to steal the mirrored crystal needed to power the gold machine. On his journey, Hawk must face many oddball odd adversaries, including dachshunds that try to throw him off the roof of the auction house, janitors, photographers, killer nuns, and a tennis player. Presumably that's Darwin Mayflower, uh, Grant's character. Oh, right, right. It's just a ridiculous side-scroller. <laughs> yeah, I, they, they have enough in this where they really could do a prequel, couldn't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious about what landed him, landed him in prison, given how good he is. Exactly. The early 80s, young, mm-hmm. younger James okay. Coburn and Danny Aiello and Bruce Willis. Oh, that's right. It was 91. It feels like the 80s. Yeah, well, I mean, it was even, that transitional period. He even says, uh, I never got to see E.T. Right. Because he went in jail in 81. Mm-hmm. On the brains? On the brains. I had a lot of fun with it, but I can't quite recommend it. I'm going 3.5. Yeah, same here. Lots of fun, but uh, people would no longer respect us if we recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, it is free on Crackle. There's going to be a link in the usual places. So, And and yeah, the, the that last act, the, the last uh, thing at Happy Endings... Mm-hmm. Um, brought it a brain so three and a half um so what have we learned uh we we learned um to uh ball ball (laughs) and i learned to never trust the cia yeah they seemed like such a wholesome organization until (laughs) we saw them all right that's it for horizon hawk until next time when we'll be reviewing monty python's the meaning of life in honor of the late great terry jones I forgot he passed it because I, I mean, so much yeah. has happened since the last time we've done this. I I remembered this one and the third one we're doing, Julie Strain. Or the, actually, now the fourth, now that uh, Stuart Gordon is no longer with us. Um, yeah. I could not remember Terry Jones. I feel bad about that because Terry Jones I kept forgetting. And I had to keep checking um, the messenger conversation that we had where we were trying to pick the movie. Um, Mm. But yeah, that's next time. Um, Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. But on to Hudson Hawk. Um, Of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary. Yeah. Sponsored by... Oh, I don't have a sponsor. (laughs) That's true. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay.